We have about 73,000 students uh, in an urban environment. We have 106 schools, uh, eight comprehensive high schools, um, and uh, about 85% of our students are free and reduced lunch. Uh, eight years ago, when I arrived at Fresno Unified, um, we still had a lot of T1 uh, connections to our schools and slower bandwidth, and so. Uh, even back then we realized that the future was content was going to come from the internet likely, at least a lot of it was. Who knows, someday most of it may. So we began working on the plumbing and when I talk to folks that's, that's one of the things that before we started trying to worry about the curriculum, digital curriculum and digital learning and all that stuff, we realized that, that we needed to have the plumbing to be able to carry that. Utilizing E-rate, uh, FCC E-rate funds and other funds, we ended up putting fiber optic uh, lines to all of our schools and this was six years ago, seven years ago. And then we started a march on uh, getting wireless because at the time most of the connections were wired. Kids would plug the computer, the teacher would plug the computer into an ethernet port somewhere and we had ports all over our classrooms. And so we just felt like mobility was coming and laptops were there and we needed to make it so that you didn't have to plug in. So now we have a, a wireless access point, an AP, uh, in every one of our classrooms. And when we started, the only place you could get wireless was in the office, and that was still a little bit, bit dicey. So we spent a lot of time on the plumbing and the infrastructure, uh, knowing that the, the things we're facing today with curriculum and personalized learning and a digital world uh, would, would require that. If, if, you, if you don't know, how unhealthy candy could be, it's just sweet and you just eat it till you're sick. You know, Facebook is very sticky, very, you know, it's just so good. Um, if you're, if you don't have a team of teachers and administrators that know how to utilize it for education, then it's just going to be a distraction. It'll be a distraction for the kids, distraction for the teachers. So it's, it's um, easier for us to kind of block that until we get to a point where we really know what to do with it. What we have done is we've uh, brought in Microsoft Office 365 and Yammer and some other tools that we do have more control over and they're, they have similarities to Facebook without kind of the public nature. So we believe in collaboration with students, uh, blog postings, all kinds of things that they might do on Facebook. We just don't do them on Facebook yet. If I look at the barriers for digital le learning, I would say one of the biggest uh, ones is that it's not about the technology. It's, it's, uh, this is not a light switch. You don't buy tablets for every kid and say, go learn. But we have that kind of philosophy, and, and I think that um, school districts get put under pressure to, uh, you've got to get with it. You've got to get with the digital world. We've we got to go buy laptops for everybody. And so they, they they do that and it's really the cart before the horse. It, 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 the, the laptop is a tool, it's a valuable tool, but it's got to roll out at the same time. And so um, it's, it's too easy to go to the store and buy a bunch of stuff. And um, then you have a bunch of stuff. Now how you take that and integrate it into true instruction and learning, that to me is the hard part. You know, it's, 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 it's hard to teach kids and um, you know it's very hard to teach them with a new tool. We've been teaching unfortunately with paper and pencil for a couple hundred years and now we're in this big shift which is um, I welcome it, I think it's going to be wonderful but too often it, it seems easy to just go down to the store buy it and then but you haven't integrated it, you haven't thought through it, you haven't said Okay, so now the kid has a computer, they're sitting there in front of the computer, and you want to teach them maybe how to decode words, or you want to teach them about, uh, you know, what really caused the Civil War. What's, what's the answer? And that, that, that's the part that we get stuck on. And you can get a computer, you can get some software, but, you know, how do you change your learning so it integrates and that you have the right materials. In something that's this big, I, we like to pilot. And so, um, you know, you can either kind of think about it all day long and then jump headlong into it, 
or you can kind of put your toe in the water. And I'm, I'm a big fan of putting toe in the water. And so, you know, not all teachers are alike. And to me, you find a group of teachers that have, um, you know, a leaning towards that who say, I will spend nights and weekends trying to figure out how this, to make this technology work in my classroom. And you get that group, some computers, and you start a pilot, and then you let it bake for six months or a year, uh, and then you learn from that. You know, you could spend all your time preparing and then just jump all in, but I wouldn't do that. I think that's the worst. I think it's best to, because that learning process of doing something small and seeing how it works and having, you know, it means you get small successes, but it also prevents you from having large failures. The main thing is to get started, right? Because, and that's part of it. Districts are, have been around so long uh, we aggressively def defend the status quo. So change is, even though we're a learning institution, change is still very difficult. And so, um, you know, the best thing to do is to get somebody to sign off on, let's do a small pilot and get in there and learn from that. Uh, teachers will learn from that, administrators will learn from that. From that, then you can begin to do a plan that really will have impact. We started uh, several years ago with giving, uh, we got a bunch of the first netbooks and we provided them uh, out to a number of teachers. Teachers had to apply. So in other words, just instead of going, you know, here's a bunch, we had them apply and they had to say, you know, I use technology in my classroom today like this. I'm going to use those tablets like this. And then they had to also be involved in having students develop a portfolio, a student portfolio of the work that they did. And that was, like I said, four or five years ago. It was a very early experiment. But those teachers were, we didn't have to sell them. Uh, we didn't have to do a lot of training, which was good because we didn't know a lot about what we were doing. And, uh, but they were excited, they were invested, they wanted to do it. And um, we provided the tools and they took off. Since then, we have done a number of uh, pilots like that, but the, the, that prepared us for uh, this past a year ago spring when we had the SBAC testing and we had to test about 32,000 students on computers. Uh, so in order to test all those students on computers, we had to buy computers and that was a, uh, but even then we did a pilot and then we selected a computer device and we bought 200 of them and we gave them to teachers and we said, we think this is the device we want. We want you to take this device and we want you to just pound the crud out of it. We want you to use it in your classroom every day. We want the kids to be pounding on it, you know, doing all the things that kids do with computers. And we want to see if this thing will hold up because we don't want to buy 15,000 of them and not have done some kind of road test with them. And so we found teachers that said, I would love that. I will use them every day. I will use them hours during the day. And so even then, we, even though we had to get those computers out, we still took two months and did a pilot with the device that we wanted. That also, we learned from that pilot from those teachers. And um, then we started doing other pilots with the things. But we took those 15,000 and right, instead of putting them just in labs, we gave six or seven of them to every classroom across the district. So every teacher got to use those tablets before we did the big test. And when we did the big test, we collapsed them into labs or cafeteria, and the kids went through the SBAC testing. But even in the original deploy, all teachers got a chance to kind of get their hands on it. It, it. You know, certainly it would have been great to have enough for one-to-one, -one, but even in this situation, every teacher had a chance to kind of play with those before we did the big test. And as a result, the big test went very well. Our strategy going forward is, is um, not really one-to-one. -one. Uh, we may get there someday, uh, but we're still not convinced that a computer in the hands of every classroom and every teacher um, makes sense because not every teacher um, is ready to teach that way. So we really, you know, if you have enough resources and you, you can get everybody on board but with, 
you know, for, for us, 3,500 teachers, that's a lot of teachers to get on board all at once. It's better for us to kind of move through that. So we have some schools doing BYOD, so students bring computers. Uh, we, think that, we think that computers are getting very personal and that it won't be long in the future before students don't want to use our computer. I mean, right now our computer may be better than the one they have. In some cases our computers are not better than the ones they have. And if they want to use an iPad, if they uh, would prefer to use a Windows device, if they want to use Android device, we should allow them to do that rather than saying, okay, you have to learn our particular deal. So we want to make sure that students have access. But you know, over the next several years, I mean, you can now, you can now buy a computer, a tablet, for less than you can buy a pair of tennis shoes. So, um, you know, it's become very affordable. And that's really for the first time in, you know, a couple of decades. You really couldn't buy things down at $150, $200. Now you can do that. So at that price point, uh, even low-income families are investing for their kids in a device. And we're not there yet, but my guess is in three to five years, kids are going to have their own device. It's, it's a very personal thing. We think the bulk of teachers are moving that direction. Many of them like it. They don't want to be first. And they, they say, you know what, don't put me in a situation where I'm uncomfortable. But they'll get there if they see that example. So by starting with the early adopters, it's not because they're smarter or better at all. It's just, they just happen to really like it and they're the ones who raise their hand first. That's fine, that's great, they're doing that. Then there's a group at the tail end who probably is just never gonna get there. Uh, but I think that it's better, instead of trying to do something by compliance and saying, you all will, I think in this world of learning, it always works out better if it's by attraction. If I see somebody who's really successful with that and say, I really had no idea you could do something that way, how do I do that? If you can get people to say, I like that, how do I do that? Can somebody help me with that? I think that the bulk of the people that we have are, are of that nature. It's not that the, those are so bad, but dealing with students that are on Facebook and trying to keep them focused on education is a challenge. Uh, I think the future uh, will be in that kind of social media and education all mixed together. But we as a district teachers, administrators, we need to figure out how to make that work. I think as we look down the, down the path, uh, traditionally we've had SISs, Student Information Systems, we've had Learning Management Systems, LMSs, and then we kind of had the social media. And certainly, certainly we're seeing a collapse between LMSs and SISs, right? You have student information and grades and a place where you can blog and you can get feedback and you can score stuff. So student information systems are adding all kinds of learning management features. Learning management features are adding attendance, and grades and other things that, that traditionally they have. And then you have the social media that's coming in. So, you know, ed tech companies are being funded by venture capital all over the place. And I really, we're still kind of at the front end. It's like, it's just like at the beginning, right? And so over the next several years, I think we're gonna see a convergence of social media, learning management systems, and student information systems. And I don't know that there's gonna be just one company who has the best but I think there will be several companies that develop products that do a good job of all those and we'll vote with our feet.